Having a reliable wireless camera control is something which is extremely useful, giving you so much more choices on how you can shoot with your camera. With these apps, you can control almost every camera setting. You can also add metadata to each clip to streamline your edit process. The most important things about wireless control is usability, a reliable connection, and responsiveness. Unfortunately, you can't stream video through these apps, but I'll show you a solution to get around that at the end of the video. So to start this off, let's look at the official Blackmagic app. It's only available on iPads, but let's see what this can do. First, we need to connect to the camera's Bluetooth. Now we have access to the controls. This first screen has all the exposure and white balance tools. These are very responsive controls, unlike other remote apps which I've used for mirrorless cameras. On this screen, we can choose a memory card to record to, and we can start and stop the recording. Also, when using this wireless control, I haven't noticed any decrease in battery life. I think this is due to the low power Bluetooth which it uses. The range of the connection is good. I've used it to about 10 feet with no issues, but Blackmagic says it can work up to 30 feet. If we tap down here, we can add metadata to each clip. This is mostly used for bigger productions where a camera assistant would put in this information for the editor. I haven't used this much, but I can definitely see it being useful on longer documentaries or films. The Blackmagic app is a great free option if you've got an iPad and you only want basic camera controls. For me, this is fine when I'm at home, but if I'm traveling, using the iPad as a remote is a bit too much hassle. That's where the Bluetooth Plus app comes in. The Bluetooth Plus app works on iPhones, iPads, and Apple Watches. It costs five pounds, but for the features it offers, I think that's a reasonable price. To start things off, let's see what it looks like on the iPad so we can compare it to the Blackmagic app. The first thing we notice is that the UI seems to be large compared to the Blackmagic app, but if we switch to the iPhone version, things look much better. It looks like it was optimized for smaller screens. So taking a look around, we've got the main controls occupying most of the screen, and if we slide the three dots on the left, we've got a status bar which shows us all the key information you need to know before pressing record. And you can tap any one of these to access the relevant controls. Let's take this off for a bit and look at the bar on the lower part of the screen. Here we can also gain access to controls. So right now we're on the white balance page, then we've got exposure, and here's a cool one. If you've got an electronic lens, you can do things like wireless follow focus. I only have a manual lens so I can't test this out. Moving on to the overlays controls and the audio controls, which has a warning that it might not work reliably. So personally, I don't use it. Don't want to risk messing up the audio settings. On this final page, we've got all the video codec options. Looking at the bottom left of the app, we've got a record button and the options to select a memory card. On the right, we have a digital slate, the same as the Blackmagic app. And if we go to this playback button, we can also control the playback of the clips on our camera. This is so convenient. All these things combined mean that you can control your camera almost completely wirelessly, without using any accessories. If you've got an Apple Watch, you can also use it as a remote. You've got to connect the phone first, and then you've got camera control on your wrist. This isn't as useful as the iPhone app, but it's just a cool feature to have. You can also do stuff like this. Use a wireless video transmitter on your iPhone screen, and then control the camera with your watch for a fully wireless setup. So to summarize, if you're looking for a wireless control app and you've got an iPad, definitely try out the Blackmagic app. If it's got all the features that you need, then just stick with it. But if you need to use it on an iPhone, or you need more features, then definitely I'd say try the Bluetooth Plus app. I've been using it for a while and I've found it to be very useful.